I'm going to start by showing you a program that utilizes a two-dimensional list. And so I have a list here of dogs, which I have 18 famous dogs. And each record contains the name of the dog, the breed, and the category. And there are three categories here. Movie and television characters, cartoon characters, and historical dogs. In my program, I have a menu of choices. And of course, the question mark will print this menu. If I do an A to show all, I see all the dogs listed there as they are listed in the list, not in any particular order. If I do a B, it sorts them alphabetically by name and again shows the breed and the category. A C sorts them by breed and even though this is a two-dimensional list, I see you can't use the sort method for a list to sort a two-dimensional list but you can use the sorted method of Python and pass it the list and have it sort on the first column. What I had to do here is create a copy of the list with breed being the first column in order to be able to sort it by breed. And I'll show you the code here in a, in a little bit. If I do a D, I'm going to look at all the dogs that are movie or TV characters. An E shows me all the ones that are cartoons. An F shows all the historical dogs. G allows me to add a dog and I'm going to add my dog which is Serenity Grace. Serenity Grace is a Rottweiler and her category would be two. She's a historical dog. She's real and she's also a therapy dog so she's got a bunch of she visit patients and families at Phoenix Children's Hospital every week. And to show you that's now part of my list I'm going to do an A and you'll see Serenity Grace there at the end. However, if I do say a C to list by breed, then Rottweiler is alphabetized into that breed. And then finally we have an H option, but let me just do the question mark so you can see the menu choice again. So H is to remove a dog, and we put the name of the dog in. Now if I put a name that's not in there, such as Frank, I'm told it can't find it and didn't delete it. If I run H again, and I put in, let's say Toto. So I type in Toto, and I'm told that Toto record is deleted. And if I now look at all the dogs in alphabetical order, we will see that Toto is no longer in that list. So that is our program. I'm going to do an X to end. And let's take a look at our code. Now, so far, we haven't seen anything new. We've been working with lists and doing things with lists from last week. But here's one thing that's different, and that is I am reading the data from a text file. And so I have here a in my main method or a main function, the very first thing I do is I create a list called dogs and I say get data. And let's take a look at that get data function. So here then is the get data function that opens my text file, reads all that data in, populates the list, and closes the text file. So let me talk a little bit about that process. So the way this works is we have our application, our Python application, and I have a text file. In this case, my text file is a comma separated value file or a CSV file, but it's still text. It just means that each item of each record is separated by a comma. And we can see here what that text looks like. So my very first row just has the, the field headings of name, comma, breed, comma, category. And then my data starts on the second row. So Lassie is the name, Kali is the breed, and the category is movie slash TV. And you can see those are separated by commas. Next one is Rin Tin Tin, German Shepherd, movie TV. Soli, who of course was President Bush's service dog, Labrador Retriever is a historical dog, and so forth. I want to be able to read that data in, and so in my Python program, here's my code. The first statement of my get data function is I have a variable called my file. My file is, is going to be a stream channel. That's going to enable me to pass data from that CSV file into my Python application. So the first thing I need to do is create that channel, and I'm doing that by telling it to open the name of my file, famousdogs.csv. Notice that's in quotes, it's a string. And that CSV file resides in the same folder or directory as my Python application. If it didn't, I could specify a path where it would find that file. So then I create a empty list called my list. And so I've created that stream and I can do a couple things with that stream. I can read that data all at once or I can read it one line at a time. And I'm gonna use the read line method to read one line at a time. And so I'm first going to, I'm gonna read the first line 
But that first line is my header information. It's that name, comma, breed, comma, category. I don't want to do anything with that. That's just describing what that data is. So I'm going to read it and ignore that first line. Then I'm going to read the next line. That next line is my Lassie line. And here, so I'm reading that line and putting it into a variable called data line. And I'm going into a loop. Well, data line does not equal just a new line character. So it's just an empty, it's just a blank line or it equals nothing, meaning there is no further line there. So I'm gonna repeat until really I reach the end of the file. That's what EOF stands for, end of file. I wanna get rid of the last char, which is gonna be my new line character on each line. I'm gonna change data line, just be data line from the range of zero to the length minus one. That'll get rid of that last character, that new line character. Then I'm gonna use the split method of my string data line, and that's gonna split it into a list that I'm referring to as elements. So I should get three items in list. The first one would be the name, the second one would be the breed, and the next one would be the category. Then I'm gonna append elements. So I'm gonna append that elements list to my list, and that gives me a two-dimensional list. It's a list of list. And then I'll read the next line. And again, if that next line's not blank or it's not just a new line character, we'll continue reading through the process. If anywhere I have a blank line inside of my uh, text file, it's gonna end on that blank line, which would just be a new line character, just be aware of that. So make sure there's no blank lines in your data. Once I've read all that data in, I need to close this channel. And so I do myfile.close, and I'm gonna return my list back to the calling statement of my program. So let's go back and look at the program again. So I'm returning my list, and my list then is going into dogs. So dogs becomes that list of all the data I just read, and then I simply work with that data as we've done already. So I have a variable called again equals true. First thing I'm gonna do is print my menu. So I have a method that prints the menu, and there's my print menu method. It's just a bunch of print statements. Then I'm gonna go into a loop while again is true. I'm gonna ask them to enter their menu choice. And they can, an, they can enter A through H or an X or a question mark. And each of those items is going to run a function or method that's related to that item. So the first one, of course, is the question mark. That just prints my menu again. A is to print all the raw data. So let's look at the print raw data. So by the way, when I call raw data, print raw data, I'm passing dogs. I'm passing my list to that method. That method then print raw data receives that data into a new list called pooches. It's just a local list for this method. I'm gonna print a header of just raw data. Then I'm gonna print dog name, breed, and category with equal signs kind of underlining those in the next line. And then I have a little loop here for doggy and pooches. I'm gonna print those three categories. I'm using the L just with lengths of 15 and 32 to put those into columns. And I'm going to simply do doggy element 0, doggy element 1, and doggy element 2. So again, let me just run this. And so if I do A, there is my printout. And I'm going to narrow this up a little bit so that you can see all this information. So just be aware, some of it's running off on the right-hand side here, but that's just the underlining. And you see I get the underlines underneath dog name, breed, and category. So everything is nicely columnized. I use those same column specifications on the headers up above and the, and the equal sign underlining. That prints the raw data. Now the print sorted name is almost the same thing. So that's gonna be letter B, print sorted name. Again, I'm passing it dogs. Same header information. The only difference here is between the print sorted by name and print raw data is here I use just the list itself, and here I use the list sorted. Now that's gonna sort pooches by each record, each first dimension, and since the first column is the dog name, it's gonna sort it by the dog name. And I just use the exact same thing as far as printing in those columns. I also have one called sorted by breed. So that's the next one, option C. It's kind of the same thing, I'm gonna pass it uh, dogs into my local list called pooches, but I want to sort by the breed, and I can't sort that by element two. What I have to do is create a whole new list that I call breed, and then using a for loop, I simply transfer the data from pooches to breed, 
but I transfer it in such a way that it's going to put the breed first, so element one, and then the name, and then the category. And I'm simply appending that. So I'm creating a, a three element list called dog record, and then I'm appending dog record to my breed list. So again, it's a list of lists. And then I print the header information, same as we did before. And now instead of our loop of being sorted pooches, I'm now doing sorted breed. And then I put them in the normal order of name first and then the breed. So if we run this again, so you can see it's alphabetized by breed rather than by name. Then I have choices D, E, and F, which simply prints a category. And I use the same method to do all three of those. I pass it a string of the category I want, movie, TV, cartoon, historical, and I'm passing it the list. Again, I'm not using any global variables here. I'm passing everything back and forth, which a lot of Python programmers prefer to do rather than using global variables or global lists. So here I'm passing it the category and the pooches. I'm printing the category in my header. I'm trying to show the dog name and the breed since these are all going to be movie TV. They're all going to be cartoon. They're all going to be historical. I don't need to show the category column. So I just showed the two dog name and breed. And again, I'm taking pooches and I'm sorting these by the name. And if element two of doggy, so each record is doggy. If element two dot upper equals category dot upper, then I'm going to print the dog and the, and the breed. If it's not part of that category that I'm trying to print, I ignore it and don't print it. So that does the next three. Then we have a choice here of add a dog. That's choice G. I'm going to create new dog equals add dog. So all I'm going to get here is a new list to be added to my list of dogs. It's one record at a time. I'm going to print add a dog, have them enter the name of the dog. If they don't leave it blank, then I'm going to ask them to also enter the breed. If either one of those are blank, then we're going to act, cancel the action. Otherwise, we're going to create a new category. And this is simply a list that I'm going to use to have them enter one, two, or three. And I have a zero here of nothing. I'm going to set cat equal to five. And then while cat is less than one or cat is greater than three, and cat here refers to, refers to category, not a different type of animal, I'm going to get the integer that they enter of either one, two, or three. Until they enter a one, two, or three, we're going to keep asking them to do that. Once they've entered a category, then I can create that new list item to add to dogs of name, breed, and the text of the category based on this category list. So if they enter a two, it's going to be historical. If they enter a one, it'll be cartoon. If they enter a three, it'll be movie slash TV. I return new pooch. And again, that's a three element list. And then that item, if it's not blank, is appended to dogs. Our next choice is remove a dog. So once again, I'm passing it dogs, putting into pooches, and asking them to enter the name of the dog. If it's blank, I'm going to cancel. Otherwise, I'm going to try to find that dog. And if I can find it, great, I'll break and then I'll get rid of it. But if I go through all my dogs and it's not there, I'm going to print that it wasn't found, no data was deleted. If I did find it, then I'm going to use the, the del command or the delete command in Python to remove pooches and whatever the index number is. And then I'll tell them it was deleted. So now I've deleted that element from pooches. I return that list without that one record, now deleted. And that goes back into dogs. So I'm updating the dogs list by passing it in a revised list. And then, of course, my final choice, X, sets again to false. And then that would end the program and print goodbye, woof, woof. If they don't enter an A through H or an X or a question mark, then I'm going to say they entered invalid choice. And they have to enter their choice again. So that's the code of this program. Again, the, the main thing we're doing here is reading in that data from a text file. But I wanted you to see how all this code works. This is pretty typical for working with uh, external data from a text file or even from a, from a database. We'll look at SQLite here in a couple weeks as far as returning uh, actual data from a database. My suggestion to you is rewatch this video and recreate the code by going through it as I went through it and just typing it in as I, as I discussed it. Uh, let me show you one more thing, and that is how did I get this data to begin with? 
So I created the data file in Excel. Excel gives me some nice columns. I simply set a column up for A for the name, column B for the breed, C for the category, and then I entered this information as I thought about it. I wanted this in a comma separated value format. And tab delimit is another popular way of doing this. And tab is great if your data is going to contain any commas. Um, you might want to do a tab delimited. And so I went to save as. I simply chose comma delimited CSV file format. And what that gave me then is a text file. What that gave me then is a text file of the data that I had in Excel now as a text file but comma separated. So it puts the commas in for me between each of the column values. One thing you might want to do is make sure that there's not a blank line in your data unless you, in our case we're taking care of that blank line using make sure there's not a new line character there but it's not a bad idea once you've created your your uh, data file it's just come in and click on that last line if the cursor goes to that last line i would backspace it so for example if there's a blank line there and i click down here and see okay the cursor's there i would just backspace one Click on it again, and now there's no cursor here, so the end of my file is at the end of cartoon. Not a bad idea to make sure your data is properly formatted and does not contain a blank line. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.